Hello from Redvale RV. This is a quick user guide on how to use your 2010 Bailey Pageant. This caravan comes with plenty of accessories and these will be stored in the front locker. We have our power lead, fresh water tank, towing mirrors, the handle for our fresh water tank, the handle to, eng to engage our motor movers, and I've shown you how to use the motor movers in a separate video, and our leg winder handle. This caravan is fitted with stabiliser legs on each corner, so before we get into the caravan, we want to attach the stabiliser leg winder to there. There's a point like this on each corner of the caravan, and we wind down the legs then it will be safe to get inside the caravan without it tipping up. Also, before we head on inside, we have our high-rise tow ball here. That needs to be fitted to the tow vehicle before you use this tow hitch. This tow hitch here has two locking mechanisms, this one here and this one here. If you want to plug your caravan into your house in order to charge it, you need to use this item here. This plugs directly into your house power point, and this blue end here plugs into your power lead. And you can then open your battery box there, which we've already opened. We plug the power lead into here. Once the power lead is plugged in, that deep cycle battery, which runs your inside lights and your water pump, will start to charge. Also, when we first set up at site, we want to take this plastic cover here off this box here. Now, this is the hot water flue. If you use the hot water cylinder on LPG, you need to remove that plastic cover in order for the bad gases to vent out here. We also need to plug in our water pickup. This plugs into the side of the caravan and drops into your aqua roll, which is that blue one up there. When you turn the pump switch on inside the caravan, it will draw fresh water from here through the plumbing of the caravan and it will come out down here. We've got this other grey tank. Now this grey tank is your grey water tank, so this catches your shower and sink water. There's a plastic fitting here, it simply attaches there and it catches the grey water coming out of your plumbing. Before we go in, these two doors here are your toilet doors. Behind here, if we have our key, we can unlock that and it has like a little spout. We can fill that up with about 10 litres of water, just fresh water, and that is the water that flushes your toilet. Down here, we've got our Thetford cassette. This catches your number ones and twos. You remove this by pulling up this orange handle and pulling it towards you, and the cassette will come out and you can tip that down a dump station. The last thing we need to check before we head on inside is that the LPG bottle is in the on position. You'll find that in the front locker here. You must make sure this yellow tap is running that way and that this LPG bottle is on. They also have a safety strap here which must be tight before travelling. Never travel with the LPG bottle in the on position. So before the caravan leaves you must turn the LPG bottle off and all of the appliances off if they have been running on LPG. We're going to step on inside the caravan. Now we would have all of our legs down, our entry step is out. We step straight in and up to the left here is our control board. This is our 12 volt control board. We want to turn our master switch on. You'll notice the voltmeter up there comes to life and it's showing we've got a really full battery. We don't really want that battery to get below 11 volts. So we want to make sure it's always got more charge than that. We've got our master switch here for the lights. The lights do have 
individual on off switches as well so if you can't get any of the lights to go remember they do have their own switches and the master switch there this one here is for our awning light above our head and this one here is for our water pump there's a little green led light there that will turn on to let you know if the pump is running when the green light goes out like it has it means that the water system is pressurized and it has turned off now once we head on into the caravan as long as we've set everything up correctly everything should work microwaves such as this run on 230 volts only this will only work when we're plugged into mains power down below us here we have our gas burners these will only work if the lpg bottle is on and has lpg in it we start it by using this igniter here we push and hold and turn the selected one hit the igniter at the same time i can't do it with one hand unfortunately and they will all come to life down to the thetford gas grill and oven we've got our top grill controller and our lower oven controller once again they started using that igniter button there when using the grill you must leave this door open when using the oven you must leave the door closed coming across to our fridge now this fridge can run off three different fuels denoted by this selector here off mains power car battery power not the caravan and lpg for the most part you can just leave the switch on lpg and the, sorry, onto the mains and every time you plug the caravan into power the fridge will automatically start and you use this dial here to control how cold you want how cold you want it we've had it running from last night we have pre-cooled it so it is nice and cold and it should stay cold for several hours while you're traveling if you want to run it on the car's battery you simply turn it there when the car's engine is running as long as you have the car wired correctly the fridge will cool down off the car's battery the next one you can run this fridge off lpg we select gas we push and hold in the primer knob there so you push and hold it at the same time you hit the igniter button you'll hear uh, the igniter ticking when the fridge comes to life you'll notice this little red line in here jumps up into the green and when it's done that you can release that dial there but for the meantime most people will just use it on the electricity setting this caravan does have an owner's manual. These are a generic manual. They're generic to any Bailey of this generation. However, it's really good to have a read through here when you get a chance. Okay, now the front area. Below this front bunk here is an onboard hot water cylinder. And you'll remember that we've taken that plastic cover off the outside of the caravan. That is so we can safely run the hot water cylinder on LPG. And the controllers for it are up here. You notice here, this is your hot water control here. 230 volt water heater. You notice we've already got that in the on position. So when I run the tap, hot water will come out. If we want to run it on LPG, we use this controller. We've got a thermostat in the middle here, and we turn the outer ring to the flame position. The green light will come on. We should hear a clunk, yes. That clunk is the gas solenoid opening, and when it opens up, you'll hear a series of ticking as the igniter is trying to start. Then, you can actually leave that running if you like. Once it's up to temperature, it will automatically shut the gas off. When it gets cool again it will turn the gas back on and keep that water nice and warm but for the most part when we've got powered sites we're just going to use the electric water heater just like you would in your house now down here we've got our room heating system and once again this can run off lpg or electricity if we want it to run it off electricity we start up here with these controllers it says 230 volt room heater. We're gonna turn that on, and what that does is powers up this switch here. 
We've got a thermostat in the middle. And you'll notice we've got a zero, meaning off. 500, meaning 500 watt. 1,000, meaning 1,000 watt. 2,000, meaning 2,000 watts of power. That's how much power the heater is going to draw. For the most part, we will just use a maximum of 1,000 watt. Some campgrounds do not have the ability to supply you with 2,000 watts. So we set the temperature, and now the room heater will start to heat up, and heat will come out. If you want heat to be moved around the caravan, we've got a fan here. We can set the fan speed, one to five, turning it on. It now draws the cold air from the room and blows it out these little yellow vents around the caravan. Remember when you are using the fan, if you are freedom camping, it will use your battery power. So it is mindful that you have to turn it to the center to turn it off. The next one is LPG control. Now in this caravan, it has an automatic igniter for the LPG. It is powered by a little AA battery that's tucked under here. So that runs the automatic ignition. To ignite this gas heater, we push this dial in, it should be set at zero, that's off. And obviously as we turn around, it's gonna get hotter and hotter. We'll push it down and we'll start he hearing some ticks. Hearing that ticking. Once the ticking stop, it means the fire has ignited. We can look through that little sight glass there. Now it's probably a bit hard to see. There it is, see that little flame there? You wanna look for that. Once you can see that, I can release this little knob up the top and I can turn it. We make sure it stays running. Once it's stayed running, you can now turn it up to whatever temperature you desire. The gas is not, uh, so it draws in fresh oxygen from outside of the caravan and it sends it up a little chimney, up this back wall and out the roof. Steam will be coming out of the roof once that's started, so don't be alarmed. It's all normal. Now I'm going to leave that going because it's a little bit cold in here. You're gonna have power points around the caravan such as these. They will only work when the caravan is plugged into mains power. You've got these little 12 volt sockets dotted around the caravan as well, so you can use those to charge your cell phone. That They run directly off the caravan's battery. Tucked down here, we have our mains switchboard. In theory, we shouldn't need to touch anything here unless we've got a problem. If we had a faulty appliance, this is our 230 volt switchboard. If we had a faulty 12 volt appliance, that is our 12 volt fuses there. Now we're gonna head on into the bathroom, which is to the left here. This is a shower toilet combination room. So if you want to use this as a shower, this is actually our shower head. Tucked away into that tap. So that, and you turn that on, hot water will come out to use the toilet. Now it is a Thetford cassette, so it catches its own waste. To use it, we need to, there's a little gray handle here. We need to open it up. And now we can see into the waste tank. We give it a quick flush. We do our business, flush it down, close the lid. Flick that switch back the other way. It's important we do that, or otherwise the waste will, the smell will come out of the loo, and you will not be able to pull the cassette out. Now, all of the windows in this caravan are double glazed and fully insulated. There's a reason they have so many latches. While you're traveling, all of these latches must be in the most inwards position or the wind will blow the windows off. So, nothing in this caravan should be hard to move, so the window should open freely. Once you've found how far open the, what you want the window, you just tighten up your stays like so, and that will hold the window open. Don't just force the window close because it will just break the stays. You just simply unwind the stays and the window will close by itself, and we, close them all the way. If we are sleeping in the caravan, you can leave the windows on air function and that allows good airflow to come in. All the windows are also fitted with fly screens. 
and blackout blinds. Now, if they will not move, don't force them, it's you're doing it wrong. To open and close them, you pull the blind towards you, pull it down first, and then it will go back up. Pull it down and towards us, and it will just go back up like so. Now here we have our trailer pin adapter. This caravan is fitted with a 13 pin plug at the front. Most cars here are fitted with a seven pin. My suggestion is you have an auto sparky fit your tow vehicle with the correct 13 pin plug. We've got our wheel lock here. We've got our toilet tablets for the cassette toilet. It is one tablet per full cassette. Emergency puncture tire repair kit there as well. Now I think I've showed you everything you need to know. Remember to refer to that manual. Thank you for watching.